Bruce Jasbot. We're back, and this time with a review of DC Universe Online. My name is Jesse Cox from 10 Ton Hammer Live at 10 tonhammercom and for those of you who don't know, this show is dedicated to playing the new, old, seldom seen, and beta MMOs that are out there right now. If you missed the very first Jesse Plays, Rift, you can go back and check on that right now, or wait until the very end. Don't worry, I'll give you a minute to decide. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna keep that up. Clearly Shazbot is a tad impatient today, so let's get this show on the road. DC Universe Online's backstory is a pretty solid comic book plot, with an amazing opening cinematic that required at least two changes of underwear. Uh, who am I kidding? I still got the same pair on. Anyway, apparently Lex Luthor manages to beat up Superman enough where Supes has to leave Earth to go recharge in the Yellow Sun. During this time, Lex and his villain buddies launch their final attack, and as you can see, all hell breaks loose. Just when Lex is about to achieve his final victory, Brainiac shows up and pretty much owns the planet. The only one who survives this carnage is Lex, who manages to sneak aboard one of Brainiac's hive ships, steals some needed technology, and you know what, we'll let Batman explain the rest. Our every tactic failed. Brainiac came to Earth to destroy it. And he was winning. Then... A dying version of Earth's greatest villain brought us a weapon from the future, stolen from Brainiac himself. New heroes to withstand Brainiac. And new villains to exploit the madness. I will train these heroes to fight the sick chaos of the Joker and the evils that face us all. So now, an ever-growing minority of the world's populace has superpowers, and of course, this is where you come in. So let's have some fun with character creation. Now, for the sake of this video, we'll do a little looking around, but to keep it 100% official, I know exactly what I want my guy to look like, but you know what? Let's play around for a bit to show you what kind of options you have. So the first screen you come to is the always hot Catwoman, where you choose your server. Clearly not much of a choice in the beta. Next, you have a choice of a super buff dude or a ginormous breasted woman, where then you can select your build from small, medium, or large, which then takes you to a screen that offers the ability to customize your hero or create one that is inspired by another already existing hero. We'll come back to that option just a little bit later. For now, let's customize one. So here's your big choice. Do you go hero or do you go villain? And after you make that decision, you have to decide which type you want to be. Everything from uh, powerful to flirty. Next, you choose your mentor. The heroes have Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. The villains have Joker, Lex, and Cersei. While it doesn't really affect any character stats or anything like that, it does affect the experience your character has in the world. So clearly, Batman starts in Gotham while Superman would start in Metropolis, yeah? Next, you have the choice of powers. Uh, fire, gadgets, ice, mental abilities, nature, and sorcery. The next thing you get to choose is your movement mode. Uh, flight, acrobatics, or super speed. Each has its own drawbacks and each has its own benefits. And lastly, you get to choose your weapon. There are many choices, here are just a few. So now that you're done with your basic powers, you now have the option to edit your outfit, your skin, and even what type of person you are. And yes, furries out there, you can rejoice. Now let's jump all the way back to the inspired by character creators. As you can see, there are quite a few options to choose from. For me, I know exactly who I want as my mentor, 
and since I want the colors to be roughly the same, let's go with that. My character, of course, is the Joker, and we'll go from there. So after some tweaking and fixing, I settled on my guy being just another lame Joker thug, except imbued with powers. Why? Cause I just want to pal around with Mark Hamill and blow crap up. And this is what my final guy looks like. His super weapon? An assault rifle. Too much fun. The final thing you can do in the editor is edit the colors of your outfit, choosing to change either the entire color scheme or simply edit it based on single parts of clothing with the colors you already have. What's great about all this work you've put into this character is that you can lock your character when you have access to the main menu. So even if you get new gear that will make them look different, on screen your character will still look the same. For me, I'm good to go, so let's do this thing. Uh, minor off-topic tangent, the load screens in this game are just really cool to me. Uh, I like them a lot. Not really sure why, but I think I can pin it down to two reasons. Now when you begin, you'll be on one of Brainiac's ships and you'll have to fight your way off. This is your standard modern game opening tutorial level. Uh, it's very simple, teaches you what to do, and in the end Lex Luthor comes, saves your butt, and you are teleported down to Earth where the actual fun begins. It's here that you enter a vast world. Either Metropolis or Gotham, it doesn't matter, both seem huge. There is tons of stuff to do, and I'll be honest, I have yet to even try to fully explore either city. It was way too big. When it comes to gameplay for DCUO, most of it comes in the way of quests given by various heroes or villains in the world, and your mentor, in this case mine is the Joker, or your special operative, and for the villains that's a guy called the Calculator, will guide you on how to do them or where to go. And, and while we're on the subject of missions, this is kind of a personal thing for me, but there is a ton of voice work in this game, especially during the missions, and while some of it is quite good, other voices sound like as if like a developer won employee of the month and a bit roll was his reward, but, uh, but I digress. That is not the case when it comes to... You're doing great on pest control, kid, but those Killjoy police are ruining my party. They're rounding up Falcone gangsters and shipping them off to the Hooskow. And they've confiscated my lovely explosives. Oh, this will never do. Find the poor slobs and get them out before the cops book them. That makes me excited to blow stuff up. Seriously, it's voices like Mark Hamill's Joker that have inspired me down the path of voice acting and to this day still push me to create a character even half as amazing and iconic as what he has done. And I'm not even close to being there yet, but performances like this always inspire. Man crush? you damn right. And one thing this game does very well is it brings back a ton of voices from the old Batman the Animated Series. But, at least to me, that fact outshines all the other characters in the game, especially the ones in Metropolis. And for some reason, when you play under Batman or the Joker, I guess it just seems more fun because I have like this childhood connection to the characters through the voices. I don't know, guess that's nostalgia, but uh, that's how I feel at least. Anyway, enough of that. You guys really don't care. Let's get back to gameplay. Simply put, this game is fun. And being a villain is lots of fun. Why, you may ask? Well, this is why. Life has lost all... Ah! The missions are simple to understand, and most of them flow very well, so if the Joker sends you to do one thing, chances are you'll get a message from him to go someplace else without having to report back to your base, which saves a lot of time and keeps the action going. Now I'll admit, at one point the Joker told me to kill a certain type of cop at one place, uh, and I didn't realize that they weren't the same type of cops I was killing at the place I was at when I was- yeah. So I got a bit confused. But uh, my don't be as bad a player as Jesse is tip is always look at the minimap. Who knew? 
Besides overworld missions, there are plenty of dungeon style missions as well. For example, Joker sent me to aid Falcone in this warehouse and uh, Catwoman shows up to help me. So basically she and I just wreck house and in the end, the Huntress shows up and my first boss battle ensues. It was pretty fun, I almost died, but hey, I got an achievement. And we all know those are the most important things in the world. The additionally cool thing is, is that after every run-in with a character, you get a cutscene explaining just a little bit more about them for those who don't know. Take the Huntress, for example. That's why I fight. Why the Hunted is now the Huntress. Batman and his crowd think I play a little rough. I think I don't play rough enough. You're gonna find backstory cutscenes with amazing artwork for every character in this game. Superman, Wonder Woman, Joker, Black Adam, Lex, hell, even second tier characters like my girl Harley gets one. Cut boom! Seriously, we're talking everyone. From Raven to Queen Bee, from Gorilla Grodd to T.O. Morrow? Yeah, if you don't know that guy, it's safe to say you'll meet a lot of new faces in the game's cutscenes. Oh yeah, and before we leave the dungeon, I get a lot of joy out of being a villain who's allowed to do something like this. And the final thing about gameplay is that scattered throughout the world, you're gonna find little mini-game events and things to sort of have fun with. Uh, for example, here's one that is an acrobatics course where you have to sort of make your way through it. Uh, it seems very much like time trials and things like that from uh, many console games. I actually had a really fun time doing these things. Now of course, with all the fast gameplay, there is a downside. This game seems to be developed specifically for console and then ported over to the PC. So if you're a PC user out there, you might find the lack of being able to use your mouse to select a menu or options slightly annoying. In this game, your mouse is your camera. And unless you press escape or one of the many keyboard buttons, the mouse stays that way. For me, it was kind of a pain. Uh, I kept forgetting and every so often caught myself looking for a logout button or the menu button and yeah. Luckily, you are taught early on which button does what, like for example, I is inventory. If I were you, I would just go out and buy a USB controller and play as it's meant to be played. And while we're on the subject of menus, let's actually look at them. Here we have our main menu, the inventory screen, the style menu where you can lock and unlock your gear, your journal for quests, your traits or skills which you can then unlock, your achievements, the current map you have, PvP, a social screen, the main menu again, and even a place where you can claim free stuff and codes. Again, just by looking at it, you can tell it seems very console-oriented, definitely not built for a PC. But enough menus, let's talk PvP. There are several types of PvP in this game, and while I didn't get a chance to try them all, I did have fun at two attempts at it, we'll say. The first was something called Legends PvP. During the game, you can unlock the ability to use different Legend characters in a PvP arena. The first I got was good old Harley Quinn, and I had a blast running around with a giant hammer. The arena we fought in was Arkham Asylum, and the crazy part about this battle is that while you're fighting the heroes with their Legend characters, different inmates of Arkham escape, such as Bane, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, and throw their minions at you as well. It was wild. The second type of PvP was Overworld PvP, and it was during the final hours of the beta. Jim Lee was brought in to play as future Batman, and there was this huge battle that was going to go down at the Gotham Botanical Gardens, and everyone was sort of gathering there for the big show. It was very laggy and crazy, and a lot of people were getting booted, so I backed away from the area and went down one of the side streets and just started causing mayhem and chaos, and all of a sudden, who should appear but future Batman. So myself and a few other bad guys decided to ambush him, and as expected, we couldn't do a thing to him. Damn you, Batman! So I guess that brings us to our last point, endgame content. Well, I don't really know. I do know there are big bosses like Doomsday and all the sorts of things that he does, but 
In what form, I really have no clue. And, and long-term playability, again, no clue. The only thing I do know for sure is that there are high-level armors or iconic suits you can pick up along the way, which are based off of one of your three mentors or any special heroes in the game. Um, here's some of them. But when it comes down to it, if I had to go on my gut feeling, this game feels much less likely to create like a hardcore raider class than most MMOs out there. Will there be some? No doubt. But I feel like this game just has a more casual feel to it. And that alone, I think, will be one of the major reasons for this game's success. And that, as they say, is that. That's it for this episode, guys. Feel free to request any game you want me to try. Go check out the past Rift episode. Thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, to be continued.